Okay, tell me about uh, meeting Ella at Club PJs. Okay. Anyway, like I was telling you, uh, Carlos, uh, I can't remember his last name, but uh, he was he was married to Ella Fitzgerald. Okay. And Ella Fitzgerald is an iconic, famous vocalist, okay, that anybody and his brother would just be tickled to death to say hello to. Okay. Anyway, I'm, I went, I'm, I wound up at the bar this night, one night, and uh, one of my call girl uh, friends was at the bar, and she invited me to sit down at the bar and have a drink with her, and I did, and we just had small talk. And uh, she lit a cigarette, and I noticed the, the, uh, she used a stick that was inside of a, a, a what do you call it? A lighter. Uh, a lighter. Yeah. And I told her, I asked her where she got it. I said, I want to get one of those. It's really cool. She, anyway, we lost contact with that, that conversation. She went out and left her purse and her lighter on the, on the bar. And all the bartenders knew that she was a regular there too, like I was. And as she went, uh, I got this maybe there five minutes or so, wondering what happened to her. And I said, ah, oh, fuck it. I lit a cigarette and I backed away from the bar. And just when I did, I backed into Kirby, this, this hard-nosed asshole actor that, that uh, was always playing badass, okay? And I pulled back and when I did, he turns around and starts poking me in the chest. And I said, what the fuck are you doing, man? And he, and he said, I saw what you were doing. You're trying to steal that gal's purse. I said, fuck you, man. And I decided I got to get rid of this guy, man. So I just pushed him out of the way. I said, get the fuck out of my way, you fucking creep. And uh, he turned and acted like he was going to punch me. And I just, boom, smacked him in the fucking nose and literally knocked him out. I mean, I just boom and he fell. <laughs> he didn't he didn't fly or nothing. He just went and then boom. <laughs> anyway, I saw him a lot in films and I noticed when I'd seen him in some films before, he had he had never seen a scar on his nose. And then after after that happened I noticed that he had this scar on his nose and I'm sure that I put that scar there, okay? Well, anyway, uh, Ella was adjacent, right next to my left, uh, at her booth with, with her husband. And I turned and looked, and I said, did you see that, Ella? I said, do you see what this guy did? And uh, I said, can I sit down with you guys? This really pisses me off. Uh, so I did, and we got to talking this and that. She said, I saw the whole thing, and she explained it all to me. You know? I knew that was going to happen. I knew that was going to People told me about you. And uh, I, we got to know each other to the point to where. Uh, well, that's because you at the time you were doing all your your stunt work and. Yeah, exactly. And so you were showing up to all the clubs, in L.A. I don't know well, about that. I'm but you were you were up. known enough. Yeah. Through the other employees of the different right. movie lots and. Right. Right. So yeah. you worked for who did you work for? I was with Four Star Productions, at the time. But you did work for. Um, Desi Lu also, right? Yeah, but that was after Desi Lu. Okay. Desi Lu was uh, uh, didn't last long. Okay. Okay. Uh, I was only there like three months at the very most. Oh, okay. At the little. So you were theater. mostly with Four Star. Huh? You're mostly with Four Star. Yeah. Well, but uh, uh, first was Desi Lu, mm -hmm. because I was auditioned and then was uh, uh, accepted for the uh, Desi Lu Little Playhouse. Okay. And uh, then. There was a problem with Lucille Ball. She was always keeping us late at night. And mm -hmm. I heard she was really hard to work with. Yeah, she for. was really dedicated because at the same time, she's going trouble, having trouble in her relationship with Desi. Yeah. Okay. Desi was behind the whole operation. He's, uh, between the two of them, they made Desi Lou What it was. Prominent. Yeah. So with Four Star, you were doing stunt work. Yeah. That came and after... Right, but what that kind of... That led into, into Four Star. Okay. okay. All right, so Four Star, you did... Uh, what kind of stunt work were I you... had a buddy at Four Star that was uh, going to a, uh, what do you call it, school that was generally required if you were going to work uh, as an actor or a stuntman or whatever to have credentials 
about Falcon Studios. That was the name of this school. Okay. And um, one of the, uh, I had, I had uh, did some improvisational stuff, mm -hmm. okay, between me and other uh, students. Right. And um, I even realized as of today, in this day and age, that if I had, I realized that people saw me as a contender, so to speak. Yeah. Okay? Because they they saw me act. Right. Okay? By way of improvisation. Right. Whenever we'd have the improvisational thing. And, uh, uh, oh, I met a lot of, a lot of people who were uh, a part of the, uh, what do you call it, young uh, generation uh, at the time that uh, were either had family members that were in the, the Johnny Crawford, the guy they played in right from a little kid. Mm -hmm. uh, they all uh, were in that same clique of people. Okay. And one of them was uh, uh, a guy by the name of Lauren uh, James. Lauren was uh, doing uh, uh, acrobatics, which I was doing as well, and fencing. Mm -hmm. So we got to know each other pretty well, okay? Right. And he realized that I was from the East and realized that I was trying to break into, uh, what do you call it, film. So you got into stunt work because of fencing? No, but, no, well that was just part of one of the classes, okay? Well, what were you really good at when you were doing your stunt work? Acting. I know, when you were doing your stunt work, oh, what were you really good at? Stunt work, uh, horse falls, uh, falls off of uh, stages, uh, fighting scenes in the bar. You, were, uh, you did pistol slinging too. Yes, yeah, Spartacus, Cleopatra. Um, I was working pretty well, man. Hell, I was making $185 a day with the That's studios. That's good. That's good. In 1950, no, in 1960, 59 and 60, mm -hmm. I was making that kind of money. Well, uh, uh, in November, I think it was November of 59, was when all this was going on, which is a, a period when the filming of seasons and sitcoms and shit were, were off and they were preparing to go for the next season coming up.